What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another game day update. The Memphis Grizzlies are taking on the Utah Jazz, so there is no one I would rather have joined me than Miss Naya Campbell, the digital reporter and host and producer with the Utah Jazz. What's up, girl? How are you? I'm so happy to be here. We get to like meet virtually, finally. So I'm excited to talk with you. Um, you know, as we face off tonight. It's all about that friendly competition. I'm <laughs> um, I'm always excited to play Memphis so I can get a chance to talk with you and, and talk my stuff. Well, that's the thing too, is that the pandemic hit last year. So no one was traveling. We didn't actually get to meet up. So this is our first time like chatting, even though not so long ago, like six months ago, we were extreme rivals in the playoffs. We're back regular season. Let's do a quick overview of the Utah Jazz. You guys are hot right now, 11 and five. The Grizzlies sitting at eight and eight. We're coming into your home tonight. Um, and look, you guys have three all-star caliber guys. Donovan Mitchell playing the way you expect Donovan Mitchell to. And then the guy that Memphis absolutely freaking loves, Mike Conley. You talked to him today. Yeah, Mike is like the, the greatest human and the kindest person. And it only makes sense why Memphis would still love him. Um, and everything that he was able to contribute there and do for the franchise. Um, we're just really blessed to have him. Um, great leader on the court and off the court. So Matt Conley in the Memphis versus the Memphis Grizzlies. It's always a good, it's always a good time just to kind of see him reflect on that time um, that he had out there. I know the first time that he came back last season and played in FedEx Forum, they played a tribute video. He was crying. Everyone was on their feet. It's just, I wasn't here for the Mike Conley in Memphis, but I felt it that night. And so I know that this matchup is so important. Um, he is, I mean, he's shooting 50% from the field right now and he's got five and a half assists. I think that just says everything you need to, to say basketball wise about his leadership. And then I think one of the bigger stories is that Rudy Gay is back. Another former Memphis Grizzly. He has his third game tonight. What have you like him the first two? What's going on? How's he doing? I mean, the first two games, like, well, first of all, like the first game that he came out, he's, he, what was five or six from three point line, 20 <laughs> points. Um, I mean, it was just like, like, it was mind blowing because, you know, he just came out. I was like, the man is hot. Like clearly he's back. <laughs> he's ready to play. Um, he didn't miss a beat year 16, like year 16 in the league. And he was out there playing like he was a, just a young guy, you know, that wasn't recovering from surgery. I mean, he had surgery this off season. And I even asked him, I was like, did this feel like the start of year 16 for you? And he actually said, yeah, he was like, no, it definitely does. He's like, this was like my toughest off season. What people don't know is like, you know, I had to relearn how to walk again after tearing his wow. Achilles and, you know, stuff like that. But he just came out there and you never would have guessed like what he went through this off season um, and, you know, scored those 20 points. Of course, you know, um, Saturday's game against Sacramento wasn't, you know, he didn't score 20 points there. But I mean, at the end of the day, like he still is such a great player on the court, um, on the floor. Like he's just a needed person on the floor. So it's always great to kind of just be able to have him back healthy out there, ready to play. And then kind of to see that Mike and Rudy connection, right? Like I didn't really, you know, as a kid that grew up in DC, it's like you saw Memphis like every now and again, but of course, like, you know, they're not always playing on television. So you don't really get to see it too much. And so for me, it just like take me back to my childhood, like being able to see these guys who really haven't like aged that much. I mean, like it's been a long time, but like they don't look like old men out there. Like they look the exact same, but then like, you know, like Mike was even talking about today in uh, media, like he was like, like I look at Rudy and he looks the exact same, but then I look at our throwback pictures and I'm like, dang, like, I guess we are like a little older. So the older guys, the old, like they're considered the older guys on the team, which is just so crazy to me. Cause I'm like, you guys still look like you're in your twenties and you play like you're in your twenties. They've kept, they've kept themselves relatively healthy um, and doing, eating the right foods, I guess, exercising and doing all that great stuff to make sure that they have a career with such longevity. Yeah. And, and I, it's kind of interesting to watch, like, it's cool talking to you as someone who works for the jazz and then here with the Grizzlies, because there is so much like intertwinedness with this. And I know I watched one of your interviews you had with Rudy and Mike about their time in Memphis, and then obviously playing together more in Utah. Do you want to talk about just like how they feel now as this isn't the first year now, the first year Mike left, it was very emotional, but now he's had time to kind of process that. Yeah. Um, so like kind of like just like my role, um, which I absolutely love, you know, here is that I get to kind of tell the stories that 
um, you don't really, I guess, see on the court. It's more so digs deep into who these people are, who these players are as people and as humans, because we're all humans and we're all people. And we kind of just get to talk about those stories and dive into that. And so I had the opportunity um, to talk with Rudy and Mike on when they first um, got back to Utah, um, just about like coming back together. Cause that was like the huge storyline right there. Just the fact that these guys are back together playing after all these years. Um, Mike played recruiter Mike and was <laughs> a was recruiting Rudy to come. Um, and yeah, so that piece is uh, that went out on Saturday. I'm like trying to think of days. Yeah, it went out on Saturday. And basically it was just a conversation with them about uh, their time in Memphis, recruiting Rudy to come, what Rudy thinks of Utah and like what Utah means to Mike. Um, and it was very interesting because, you know, I got to ask Rudy, I was like, what was rookie Mike like? Because Mike was 19. <laughs> 19 year old Mike. <laughs> when he, 19 year old Mike. And it was so funny because um, Rudy is just like also just like super a, a funny guy. Um, his sense of humor is just like, it's just great. And so like asking him, like I was, I first talked to Mike and I was like, Mike, um, what did you think? Like, what do you think Rudy's going to say about rookie Mike? And Mike was like, he's probably going to say that I was quiet, you know, like really green and, you know, just trying to adjust the system. And so then I go and I tell Rudy and Rudy's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, not nah, sometimes, but nah, he was like, yeah. And he agreed with him. He was like, yeah, no, he was young. He was quiet. Um, and even now, like he's still kind of coming out of his shell because Mike isn't, Mike is the kindest person. Um, but Mike's also not going to be the person that's like super, super loud or anything like that. Um, but, you know, as, as a true leader, whenever Mike talks, they listen. And so that was kind of cool to just be able to like, what was young Mike like before the kids, before getting married, all of that? What was that 19 year old like? So that was pretty cool. Um, just kind of talking about how their bond is so strong and all these years later. And they talked about the tough years that they had in Memphis to the, um, the tough years that they had in Memphis and how they were able to grow as people on the court, as players on the court. And that's what really made their connection so strong. Um, and that's what makes it strong to this day. And then coming back and what, what that would be like on the court now all these years later and getting that assist from Mike Conley and um, how Rudy's game has now kind of, you know, he used to, Mike was talking about even today, like he would um, pass him, the, he could alley it to, my, um, sorry, he would pass it to Rudy and he knows that he's going to hit the backboard or something like that. And now Rudy's game has kind of stretched the three-point line and just kind of seeing how their game has really just grown and how um, he has really become just, some, just how they both have just become dominating on the floor. Um, so yeah, that was a really fun piece, just being able to talk to them, tap into that relationship, why that relationship is so special. And then also hearing Mike as a recruiter, because when Mike decided to sign back with the Jazz, he was without tampering. He says um, that. He makes sure to He say says that. that. He made sure that. <laughs> like it was a nice little pause. <laughs> That's how you know he's a vet. He's like without tampering, stares dead in the camera. And, <laughs> I did that. But he was, yeah. And like Mike was just kind of just talking about like, I'm super annoying. I was always calling, texting, like, should I send the text? Should I not send the text? Um, but it worked and Rudy's here and they're back, um, back stronger than ever. And it's really cool to kind of see that relationship uh, really blossom and continue to blossom. Um, and it's going to be so much fun tonight to see them face off against the Grizzlies. Yeah, they're a former team. And it's kind of this story that I know Memphis fans love. It's it's the grit and grind era with both these guys now playing mm -hmm. this Grizz next gen era that they've adopted the last, you know, two, three years with John Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr. So it's going to be really fun to watch that team. Uh, if you're watching this on Twitter, I'm going to put Nio's um, story in down below so you can watch it because we know we love some Mike Conley and Rudy Gay. So thank you so much for your time today. The game tips off at eight o'clock. Everyone at home, you can watch it on Valley Sports. East. I also want to mention another thing that Rudy said during the press the press the other day was that he's a he's a fan of John Morant um so just want to just like I mean this next generation team which is really cool to kind of just see um mm -hmm. really like this like like you said it is the next generation so I'm really excited to kind of see them uh you know it's always cool to see the young guys out there um they don't give up <laughs> we learned no. that in the playoff series it's never it's not you know it's they're just always giving it a hundred um, so it's always fun to kind of see a young team out there and mm -hmm. to see these young guys face off against people, um, face off against players that had such a, um, um, that had mm, like such a history and an impact and like, yeah, they changed the like culture of Memphis basketball. Exactly. So to kind of see that to like, and for them to be called next gen and then grit and grind to kind of see that together tonight. That's going to be really, that's really exciting to see. Um, I think this is really special, a really special moment. Um, so thank you for having me on to talk about no. it.